new kid in town, meet Old Faithful. How does the new V650 stack up to the Old Faithful SF600? Today we're going to find out. Hey there, and welcome to Machines and More. In a recent video, I showed the new Cooler Master V850 and V650 SFX power supplies. While the V850 unit is a really exciting unit and available for a small premium over the V650, the 650 watt unit is also worth considering, especially if your system's power needs are always going to be on the moderate side. If you're the perennial 2070 or 3770 level of user, then it's possible you'll never get the benefit of a higher powered unit. I mean, in my personal build, I'm fine running a 650 watt unit and I have no immediate plans to change that. Today, I'm gonna to show you in a little more detail on how the V650 unit stacks up to the ever popular Corsair SF600 gold rated unit. Now, even the wattage between these two is slightly different, this one's a little more powerful. The reference price is about the same at $120. And I think many folks wanting an SFX unit for their SFF build will for sure be considering this Corsair SF series and whoopee, now you have another option. There was a recall on some of Corsair's platinum rated units, but that did not affect the gold rated SF600 we'll be looking at today. And having been out for a few years in general, these have a very good reputation and my particular unit has always been problem free. So while I will dive into operating efficiency, I won't get any more technical than that. And I'll discuss the operating behavior of the fan, the fan noise, the cables and accessories to give you some data points for your consideration. The test system built up here for these is based on the Ryzen 5 5600X and the 3080 Founders Edition card. And these together get power draw at the wall of about 450 watts when everything is at load. There's no AIO, custom loop pump, no HDDs, no two and a half inch SSDs. There is just an M.2 drive. A 600 watt or 650 watt is entirely sufficient to satisfy this peak load. For both units, there is a defined relationship between load wattage and fan speed, but that is at least somewhat dependent on the temperature of the unit. For example, neither fan would come on at the beginning when running Unigen Heaven 4.0, which draws about 400 watts for the whole system at the wall. Only after the power supply warming up did either fan start running. Now, Cooler Master says the V650's fan will run at 15% load, but from my testing, that also first requires the unit to be warmed up. The SO600 behaves in much the same way, but the threshold is a little bit higher than the V650 at about 20%. For the V650, once it was warm, after running Unigen Heaven at, for about 10 minutes, after I turned off Heaven and ran a blender render drawing 120 watts of the wall, the fan was teetering on the edge of running and not running, indicating that this was the threshold. 120 watts at the wall is roughly 108 watts delivered on the DC side, and that falls roughly in line with Cooler Master's stated specification of about 100 watts. For the Corsair, the fan won't run until about 20% load and when the unit's warm, and it didn't kick on for the CPU only render with the Ryzen 5, even though 20% is roughly around that same level of power draw. As for operating noise, the fans add a similar amount of noise to the roughly 43 dBA noise of its surroundings when the system was on. From 20 centimeters away, the fan added anywhere from a half decibel to one decibel, depending on the load, to the total noise pressure levels. They're not loud, but for sure they're not silent either. Now, not having an anechoic chamber, I had to get a little creative and just make a reasonable test that would satisfy uh, most users use cases. Now what I did to evaluate these in terms of operating noise was pull them out of the system completely and I ran long extension cables to uh, power the system inside the case. I didn't want to mix in system noise with it and even though the case was nearby I tried to isolate it by placing the glass panel between it and the PSU. Now I just take the sound clips for an AB comparison. These are not representative of the real life noise levels you would experience because they are enhanced. And you can hear the before and after as well as the difference in sound pattern between the two. I will preface this by saying that in terms of hearing either PSU fan when they were on outside the system was a tall order and the system noise always made it difficult to hear. The sound samples are all amplified so it's no representation of how these would sound in real world usage. The first set of comparisons were recorded with a shotgun mic 10 centimeters away from the unit. First up is the SF600 without fan 
and with fan than the V650 without fan and with fan. To really split hairs here, I placed the same shotgun mic super close right on the unit towards the middle of the fan. Both fans had a little bit of coil whine and while I absolutely needed to put my ear up to the fan to hear it, it was there. Now I don't think anyone runs their power system on the outside of their case and you know, uses it with their ear against the PSU, but then again, maybe there is someone out there who does and that test is for you. At any rate, it was there and the wine on the V650 was just a little bit stronger. Although this is a newer unit, I've only been using it for about a month, so it may just take time to break in. In terms of efficiency, I measured both of these with a kilowatt unit uh, to get the power draw at the wall and recorded the reading every five seconds, then averaged them out. The SF600 is a little bit more efficient than the V650 at lower draws, but that advantage quickly goes away past 400 watts. With voltages and fan speeds all locked down, I measured power draw at the wall when running different programs. For a low draw from CPU only rendering, the SF600 drew about four watts less on average. For Heaven 4.0, about seven watts lower. For gaming on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, about eight watts lower. And at 430 or so watts for a combined GPU and CPU blender render, the SF600 is functionally on par with the V650. For the max load of Heaven 4.0 and Blender combined together, they are a virtual tie. You might make a small argument for the SO600 since at gaming loads, you'll likely see a handful of watts worth of advantage, but it's not a meaningful difference. It's just good to know that for the most part, efficiency isn't drastically different between the two units and that the new kit on the block is at least on par. Lastly, if we take a look at the cabling and the features, the V650 is the clear winner. Both are fully modular with reasonable cable lengths for uh, most SFF systems. The PCIe cables from the V650 are thicker. These are 16 gauge and the SF600 is 18 gauge. All the others are 18 gauge cables. Cable lengths are fairly similar. The CPU cable on the V650 at 450 millimeters is 50 millimeters longer than the SF600 which I will say actually matters a big deal for some builds and cable management since that connector is usually farthest away from the PSU. When building in the NR200 with the V650, I felt more comfortable with the extra slack from the V650's cable uh, that made cable management just that little bit easier. You also do get two of these cables, which I don't think matters one bit unless you're using this for an HEDT build, but a spare cable is a nice thing to have on hand too. There's one less PCIe or CPU connector uh, from the SF600, and it doesn't help that the included SF600 PCIe cable is single-ended. So for a GPU needing both cables, you have to take up all these available connectors. At the same time, if you run a less power-hungry GPU, like a 1660 Super or a 2060 Super uh, in your system that only needs one eight pin, this is actually a slight advantage because you run less cables. The V650 also includes two dual-ended PCIe cables, so you get a spare. For SATA power, the cables are equal in length, but you also get two of these from the V650. The peripheral cable is pretty similar. Uh, of course, if you're building in a system with a tempered glass panel, you might go for full-on custom cables, and none of this might matter to you at all. For the remaining accessories, you get an ATX to SFX adapter plate with the V650, which I've never used, but can be helpful if you're going to go back to a case from an SFF case that uses the ATX standard. The cable wraps on the V650 are a nice Velcro strap, and you get a decent selection of zip ties with both. The Corsair has a little badge too to let you know what's in your system. The V650 has a 10 year warranty compared to a seven year warranty on the SF600. Now, to wrap it all up, I think performance-wise, both these units are extremely similar. On a pure efficiency basis, the SF600 is marginally the winner, but the V650 does give you that extra 50 watts of headroom, which makes it safe for most Ryzen and 3080 builds. It's really hard to choose an overall winner, but I do think for, for the extra capacity, the included accessories, and the whole package perspective, 
the V650 has that slight edge. It's just a little bit more polished and I think a lot of the small things are a nod to the current SFF builder. Whether you prefer the proven SF600 or the longer warranty of the V650, if the capacity for either unit is sufficient, you really can't go wrong with either. And the good news is that both these units are more readily available than their higher powered counterparts. I will be leaving product links down below for your consideration, so please use them if you'd like to support the work here. Thanks so much for watching. Please hit subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you again soon.